Amanda Stratton. I'm the president and co-founder of Lipodystrophy United, and we represent lipodystrophy patients all around the United States. So Lipodystrophy United really serves as the bridge between the patient community and the medical community. And while we make connections when necessary, we also really understand the burden of the disease from the patient perspective. And we understand the medical complications. And we really provide that communication bridge um, so that patients better understand what's happening to their bodies from a medical perspective and can better advocate for themselves with their doctors. And that also so that doctors and researchers better understand the patient experience so that they can look at um, basic research all the way to treatment options that really serve um, what's best and what's most needed in the patient community. Lipodystrophy is lipo being fat and dystrophy being wasting or atrophied. Um, there are multiple types, but ultimately it means that your fat, your adipose tissue, does not store in the right place. So if you're looking at somebody visually, um, depending on the type of lipodystrophy they have, they'll have a complete absence of adipose tissue in their body to a partial absence. Um, what the most common type would be a type of partial. And you would see folks then that don't have adipose tissue in their arms or legs, um, but they may carry excess fat in their trunk or their face. Um, and while it might look kind of cool, because we look athletic, muscular, it actually the only safe place for fat to hang out is in your adipose tissue. And if it can't store there, then it kind of flows around in your blood and organs. And that leads to um, a progressive fatal condition often due to the excess fat in your organs. Yes, when I talk with some of the physicians here at Endo, I ask them, um, do you have a patient with either severe insulin resistance or very high triglycerides that are not responding to traditional therapies? And if they say, yes, I think I do, then I ask them, um, have you undressed your patient? Have you looked at their adipose tissue? Have you looked to see do they have adipose tissue in some places of their body, but not others? Um, because those are telltale signs of lipodystrophy. And nowadays, doctors have such incredible schedules, they don't have time to undress their patients. But if you undress your patient, you can see disproportionate placement of adipose tissue. Do you have folks that look very athletic but their metabolic numbers do not reflect what you see on the outside, that's a telltale sign of lipodystrophy. So currently, um, management and treatment for lipodystrophy depends on the type of lipodystrophy you have. If you have generalized lipodystrophy, and again, that is a head to toe lack of adipose tissue, um, there is an FDA-approved treatment called Myolept, and that's a leptin uh, replacement. So it's a recumbent leptin um, that is a sub-Q injection, and that really helps your body know not to store fat in your organs. It sounds a little magical, and I'm not a scientist, so the science of it is, is a little bit tricky, but it really does help folks with generalized lipodystrophy live um, really much improved quality of life. Leptin is a hormone that your, uh, it's an endocrine hormone, and your body um, makes leptin in your adipose tissue. That's the only way to get leptin. If you don't have that adipose tissue, then you're not developing um, normal leptin levels. And that is one major component of the disease. Partial lipodystrophy patients 
don't currently have an approved treatment. So there are some clinical trials that look at uh, metroleptin, which is a recumbent leptin therapy um, for folks as a potential treatment option. And we do see for some patients a huge response that's beneficial. And unfortunately for others, the response is not as strong. So there is significant amount of research um, and treatment options still needed for patients with partial lipodystrophy. So the diagnostic odyssey for lipodystrophy, regardless of type, is often very long. Um, if you have generalized lipodystrophy, um, if you're, I hate to use the term lucky, um, but if you're lucky, you'll have a pediatrician that is recognizing that absence of adipose tissue, and then there's some treatment options. Um, many patients, though, specifically with partial lipodystrophy, go years and years and years without diagnosis. In fact, the mean uh, diagnosis age is 36. And by that point, patients often are seen at diabetes clinics or lipid clinics, or just have kind of this mysterious multi-system problem where physicians um, are not recognizing the disease. And so they're really thinking folks are not compliant in traditional metabolic treatments. So they're accused of not taking their statins or not taking their insulin or only eating fast food, not watching their diets. But that's actually not true. These folks are working really hard to manage their health. Um, but again, with severe insulin resistance, it does lead to so many challenges. Children with lipodystrophy, regardless of the type, have a lot of challenges. They often have mood, fatigue, behavioral issues that are complex, but often associated with hyperphagia, which is severe hunger. And so the, those kids are having a really hard time in school because they're so hungry. It's really difficult for them to pay attention in class. They're thinking about their next meal. They're exhausted. They're not feeling well. And um, that leads to, you know, really major challenges with friends and family. So it's very important that we raise awareness of the disease so that when folks get to us, we can better help the whole family understand that these are not um, specific to one child. These are very common problems in this rare disease. There's so much work to do as we educate the medical community. There's a few key things I'd really like physicians to understand. One, their patients are not exaggerating. Um, I would like physicians to understand that a lot of these patients have been um, really mistreated or ignored in the medical community. So it is really important to, to create a relationship and develop that trust. I'd also really like physicians to understand that for some children with lipodystrophy and adults, the level of hyperphagia is so severe that it's almost like prodder willy. And there's a real lack of understanding in, in, in that because patients can eat and eat and eat, and you're not going to see that visually because the fat cells are dead. So they're not going to store fat. And so you kind of think like, oh, you're so lucky you can eat and you, it doesn't show. But that's not true. It's actually storing in our organs. And um, without really looking like an MRI or a fibro scan um, and an echo, it's really difficult to understand how much organ damage there is. Even though we're seeing a huge improvement in the understanding of lipodystrophy, there's still a lack of understanding that it's a progressive disease. So you may, as a clinician, diagnose a patient um, when they're younger, which is very exciting, but they, their metabolic complications may be very mild. What's really important to understand is no matter what type of lipodystrophy you have, it is progressive. Some patients progress further than others, but at some point that patient will need um, to be closely monitored. They need an MRI, they need an echo, 
they need regular blood work, um, and we hope that uh, the management slows the progression further. But it is really crucial to, to recognize that just because they don't have severe metabolic complications now doesn't mean they always won't. Our experience this year at ENDO is really um, exciting. It's generating a lot of hope for me because what we are seeing is physicians and researchers are stopping by our booth and they know about lipodystrophy. Um, that has not been my experience in the past. In the past, we've really chased down um, folks to educate them on just the term lipodystrophy. This time what we saw was folks said, I may have a patient with lipodystrophy, or I've heard of lipodystrophy, tell me more. And that has been really helpful. I'm able to say, do you have any patients with severe insulin resistance that are um, not responding to treatment? Or do you have a patient that you suspect of having Cushing's, but they are not, uh, it, after diagnostic testing, you realize they don't have Cushing's? Think lipodystrophy. And the response rate there is, is really wonderful. We're learning over time as the patients are coming together and we're really having a larger collective patient voice. We're understanding that no matter what type of lipodystrophy you have, a lot of the problems are very, very similar. And having that psychosocial component, meeting others with lipodystrophy really provides a level of comfort and normalcy to folks who've gone a very long time not understanding what's happening to their body.